Okay, so I've finished the sculpting on the main body, I, I think. There might be bits I've missed I'll have to come back to. That'll show up when I start painting it later on. Um, but yeah, looking good. I've finished the bits around his cuffs and his lower legs. I beefed up the sort of cuffs on his boots because I'm not going to do the spiked, um, the spiking out bit. But I'm going to start on the head now. And so I've been thinking about this. And I really do want to capture that black cage that's around his head. Let a closer look on that. Now, the issue that I'm sort of facing here is that how do you sort of, it's going to be really thin, uh, it's going to have the fire around it, and it's going to hinder articulation. So what I'm going to try and do is attach it to the figure's head rather than his, his collar so that it will rotate around with him. Because what we don't want is for Dormammu to look right and to be not be able to see anything because that cage thing is in the way. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach it around his head and then he should be able to articulate. So that's going to have its own challenges. So what I've been just doing before um, I started filming this was I was just messing about with some paper and trying to draw out what I think was going to happen. What I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to, well I've already done half of it, I cut out a strip of paper and wrapped it around his head. You see it's that's about the right thing that I'm looking for. And then I, I drew one half of the sort of design onto it. Now, it's going to be kind of difficult to, you know, try and figure out where it's going to fall around his eyes. So you can see I drew quite quickly on here a little sketch where his eye and mouth are going to be. So I think I've got that. Um, so we'll see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this onto some uh, craft plastic. So here's here's paper and that's craft plastic. So that's just more resilient than paper obviously. But still it's fairly easy to cut with a, a craft knife. So I'm just going to transfer that onto there. Quite how I'm going to do that, not too sure. What I will probably do is um, cut this out on, well, I'll, I'll fold it and cut it out in the paper and like a snowflake, that will give me the exact same image over there. And then I'll lay that onto here, draw around it and then cut it out. So yeah. So, let's see how that works. Okay, so just spent a couple of minutes folding that over and cutting it out. So, let's see. There we go. So this is still the paper version. Yeah. That's alright, that's pretty good. So I'm going to transfer that onto the onto the um, styrene or what do they call it, craft plastic and uh, cut it out. And I've now cut it out of the plastic. So there we have it. Um, oh, dropped it. So it's quite sturdy and but a little flexible. So what I want to do is I'm just going to heat it in hot water the same as other plastic to make it flexible and then sort of curve it round his head like so because if I do it when it's you notice I've I've curved it a little but when you start um 
you know, it folds rather than just bends. So I'm going to heat it so that it's just more pliable and it will just have a nicer curve to it. And then once I've got that, I'll, I'll cool it, um, heat and cool it into shape. And then I'll start sculpting on Dormammu's face. And then we can get started on the fire. Here's a quick comparison between the um, what I'm starting with and what I'm aiming for. I think I'm even though it's a classic Dormammu, the face is going to remain much the same. Important things that I think to look out for here. You know, he's only really his face is just eyes and a mouth. Um, so we need to get the the brow. Um, really accentuated to bring some 3D effect into it. Also, he doesn't have a nose, but there still needs to be something there, so it's quite beak-like, the top lip. Um, he has these vertical scores across his face. Um, you can see that in the original art. Um, so I'll be capturing those as well. What is, some, what is quite difficult, I feel, about Dormammu's face is that it's quite jack-o'-lantern like, like a pumpkin, Halloween pumpkin. So when you do that, you do the mouth, it's very easy for it to look like he's really happy. And that's something we want to stay away from. I mean, he is a maniac, but still we want him to look angry rather than happy. But we do want to preserve that expression. And how I did it in the head you can see on the left is I brought the top corners of, so his mouth would go like that, I brought the top corners of his mouth down, so he's more shouting, but it's still got that Dormammu style shape. So I'm just going to get started on sculpting that face, and just to see what we're starting with. Mr. Sinister already has that great brow, so I'm going to try and keep that. I'll probably sculpt a little on top of it, just so that I can sculpt in those um, vertical sort of lines on his face. Um, his face is a general good shape for Dormammu. I've left plenty of space for the mouth there. And really, I don't want to keep the eyes, so once I've got the general shape of the eye, and I think it's well good. I'm going to go in and just fill all that detail in with some putty. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Here's hoping, huh? But we'll see what happens. Okay, so I think I've finished sculpting his face, much as I wanted it. It's looking fine to me. So what I'm going to do, I've actually made a little change. I cut off a bottom piece here, um, because I found that if I was going to attach it, it, if there was anything there, it was going to prevent his head from tilting backwards. So I've... Um, cut that bit off, created the gap. So we're now going to try and fit this around his head. I'm just wondering how to do that best. Um, it does still have a bit of a spring outwards to it. So really I think I'm going to have to build up some flames around his head and then just glue that to the flames at the points that connect. And then go back in and sculpt the flames coming through the cage and see how that works. So 
um, just started sculpting on some flames that like he's looking a bit scroll like at the moment. These look like big pointy ears. But I'm just trying to build his head out in the direction so that I can then get this cage stuck on and then really get some work done. So with flames you don't want them to be symmetrical. Um so even though I do want to build out equally in all directions, I want it to work differently. And with a flame, what I find useful, wet your fingers and flatten it and then sort of tw twist it round. So I'll try and get a spiral. And then try and create a three-dimensional shape. So it's not only going up the way, it's curling backwards and forwards and going up. It kind of helps capture this sort of chaotic look for flames. And I think that looks pretty good. You can just go in with the edge of your sculpting tool and just press in a little groove here and there. And I'll do the same on this side. Flatten it down. And twist it, being careful not to copy the shape of the other side too much. I think I'm going to change that shape. Anyway, there's going to be a lot more flames. So really, these initial flames that I'm creating are just going to serve as support for the later ones. Um, this one up the back. There's not much to say about that one, really. Okay, so he's looking, yeah, looking a bit scroll-like at the moment, but... I'm just adding a bit of interest to that flat surface there. And the paint, really, it's going to look a lot like worms until you add in the paint, because that's what, you know, the hot colours will make flame really work for people. Uh, just try to fade the fire into these vertical lines that are coming off his face. Okay. So what I'll be doing constantly is putting it in hot water to heat it, otherwise I'm going to be waiting forever for it to set and then moving on. Um, something to watch out for when you do put it in the hot water is that uh, it will go very soft for a few minutes so you can lose any of the shape that you've sculpted. So that's just something I'm going to have to watch out for. Um, He'll be going in head first, so it's likely that the flames will just go straight up the way. But I'll I'll try and keep my eye on it as it hardens and shape them if necessary. So hopefully when we next see him, he'll have a few more flames and hopefully we'll be able to attach uh, that cage to his head and get a move on. Okay, so after a lot of patience and just trying to get it right, I've sculpted some of the extra flames you see on there and managed to super glue the cage thing onto his flames and his head retains the articulation well in the forward and back so that's what I was looking for and finally I think we're Getting, you know, I'm at that stage where I think, yeah, this is actually going to turn out quite nice. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen Dormammu, a custom Dormammu made with this sort of cage around his head thing. I think that's going to look quite cool. So I'm going to go in and um, do more flames, some poking through the, the gaps and intertwining in it and towering up a little bit higher. And then, we'll see how he looks. The next step after that is to do the, you see the, um, his collar piece. 
just to sculpt some uh, fangs coming up from that and perhaps some flames coming up around that as well just to um, merge the, the head sculpt into the body sculpt a bit because he's not just his head is on fire it's like his head is within a plume of flame so that's what I'm going to be trying to capture but all in all quite happy with them so far okay so I'm going to get sculpting on these um, intertwining flames oh and just before um, while I was looking at detail of, as well I, I realised that I hadn't touched the belt and that was because Mr Sinister has these really cool um, sculpted circles on his belt and uh, I felt they were quite Doctor Strangey so I just decided to keep them I think they look quite cool and would suit Dormammu um, rather than the big sort of belt he's got here so yeah let's get going okay so I've finished sculpting the well some of the fire coming up see I've got a uh, leafing through, leafing, um, weaving through the the cage bit here, and I've extended it up the top. Um, I'm a bit concerned that it might be getting too thin in some areas, but I've always tried to have them supporting each other, so they're making up a lattice rather than just, um, you know, supporting themselves individually. So yeah, I think that's looking quite good. So what I'm going to do, I've also basically sculpted on the shape of his collar going around his shoulders. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start using the flossers that I had and I'm going to be using the spiky end <coughs> and I'm going to be cutting them to about this length and bending them a little. I will cut a groove into the collar and then place it. I'm going to be putting one, two, three, four. I think looking on the drawing there may be one on either side as well. So we put in six and what I'll, when I'm placing them I'll be trying to be careful that his head can still rotate the full um, way. So that's uh, going to be a bit of a challenge. I might have to angle them very carefully but we'll see how it works out. Alright so I've sculpted the collar you can see where I've put the um, the flosser tips in going round and then went in with some sculpt and sculpted up the edges. I'll need to go in and sand them down make them a bit smoother but uh, you'll notice compared to the design uh, the what will I call them, fangs on his collar. I've made them much bigger. I, it's it's just a, I think it just makes it look more evil. Um, but it's also going to help when I do the final, I'm hoping, bit of sculpting, but just to add some flames coming from within the collar. Those will help support the flames um, so I can wind the flames up them. So that's why I've chosen to go that way. So yeah, phew. Hopefully this will be the final bit of sculpting and then we can get on with painting. But all in all, so far, I'm really happy with how he's coming out. All right, so I think we are about done with the sculpting. Not about done, I think we're totally done. I've added some of the extra flames around his collar when that's painted up. That should look pretty impressive I'm hoping, as with the rest of it. So I've now cleared my workstation of all the sculpting sort of material. I've got my a jar of clean water uh, and I'm now going to get onto the painting. 